PhD program, and uh, he's going to talk about the novel framework for music similarity measure. And uh, Tintin is a third year PhD student. But, uh, uh, previously, he has worked with uh, um, multimodal music transcription and music analysis. Now, he extended his research um, focus uh, to this uh, uh, music, multimodal music information retrieval. So, without uh, too much uh, time, taking yes. from your time slots, and then you can go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, thank you everyone for coming to my talk. Uh, I'm Zhang Jingjun. Uh, my topic today is about a uh, concept map of framework for music similarity measure. So, because we have a relatively small group, if you have any questions, feel free to stop me. Uh, uh, just shoot your question. The outline is uh, I'll give a brief introduction about music similarity measure, and then uh, we'll talk about the framework we proposed actually in this paper. Uh, this talk is, is about the paper accept, accepted in this year's uh, CBR conference. And later we talk about evaluation followed by the conclusion. First, let's uh, talk about the introduction. So about music similarity measure, first we need to get a sense of uh, what music is and what's uh, its digital form. So basically, here is a piece of music. So we all can listen to this music. Whatever you feel, whatever you perceive, this is music. And uh, what's Anyone knows this song? Yes, from Beatles. Yeah, from Beatles. In a studio form in real life, like uh, nowadays, uh, it's like a complicated picture. This is a, a track page from Last FM. So for this music, we have its title. It's from Beatles. The title is Let It Be. And we have some description about the song. And we have some tracks. And we have its audio. We also have its video. So, if I look at the music and its digital form, and we have some rough conclusion that music item is really a multi-faceted object. So we, whenever we talk about music, it has a, its own aspects, many aspects to, to talk about. And also, it, its digital form is a multimedia document. Uh, it has its own modalities such as text, audio, video, and image. Right. Uh, if you chop out one frame of the video, this image. And a uh, similarity measure about music item or music in general is really, we, it's really about a metric in mathematical terms to, how to, to structure the whole space of a music database. Once we have a metric, we know their distance between each other. We, we can further derive them either topology or clusters or hierarchies based on that. Uh, what's on music similarity used for in information retrieval field? First, in search, once we have a music similarity, we can find its nearest music items to a music query. Here, we, we can simplify a query as a part of a music document. Is there a keyword or an audio example in search, by example? In uh, music recommendation, we can list the nearest music items to the one a user is listening to so to recommend more similar music to the user. And in music browsing, one way to go is to organize a large music collection into clusters or in hierarchy, so that users can easily navigate within this music collection to find their favorite music. And some uh, researchers conclude that music similarity marry is a fundamental concept in the field of music information retrieval. It's slightly true in general information retrieval field. The similarity measure is a, a fundamental concept. Uh, this page, uh, page summarizes the existing uh, research works on music similarity measure. We can categorize them into three broad categories metadata based, uh, similarity measures, con content based, and also semantic description based. And in the uh, following few slices, we'll go through briefly about each category and then see whether we can propose something better. About metadata based uh, similarity measure, we are, all, we, are, uh, we are very familiar with this kind of similarity measure. In uh, the current commercial applications such as Last.fm or YouTube, 
they just focus on the metadata, which is the mainly the textual description of the music items. They try to use uh, text retrieval techniques to match between the query and the music items in the database. Uh, there are some uh, the, the advantage is clear, it's fast, because uh, it's uh, generally affordable in the commercial applications nowadays. But its disadvantage is that sometimes it's expensive to get uh, a complete set of metadata, or even a meaningful set of metadata. And also, it's, sometimes it's difficult to describe music semantics in human languages. For example, if I ask you to describe the melody of the music we have just listened, so how can I describe it? It's very difficult to describe in terms of human language. This is the first uh, category. The second category about music similarity methods is uh, based on content. Content here we mainly talk about other content. Uh, they, uh, some researchers they focus on a single aspect of the content. For example, they focus on melody. They derive some. They develop some. Uh, query behind the system. You sing a song, you sing a, a segment of melody to the system, you record your voice, and use it to match with the audio content in a database. So this is query by humming using melody as that. Uh, some people also use tempo, means you tap. Uh, you can tap a faster speed so that it will return you some songs with faster tempo. You can also tap slowly to find some songs with slow tempo. And also, other researchers, they don't care the specific aspects. They just derive some features to describe the whole content of the audio. And uh, uh, the intention is that the feature will capture the music sense in the whole, and then use this feature to match between the query audio and the audio in the database. Uh, so the the advantage of this is that they don't rely, rely on any explicit form of metadata. So you, as long as there is a song, they can do some retrieval. But the disadvantage is that uh, it's not adaptive to the changing information need of users, which means uh, no matter you use a specific aspect or use uh, music as a whole, the user cannot easily customize using which aspect to search for their favorite music. So that's not adaptive uh, enough yet. And another difficulty is that the because audio feature is uh, usually high dimensional in nature, so it's not very efficient to index or retrieve or query those uh, feature sets. So this is uh, the base people know as a high dimensional indexing in right <laughs> the indexing in high dimensional space. The third category about music similarity measure is based on semantic description. Semantic description here we mean people try to define a music vocabulary to describe the music meanings uh, in whatever sense. For example, in Last FM we have a set of tags here. All those tags uh, are like uh, rock or violin. All those words are used to describe a music content. So people tend to predefine a music vocabulary and then use a multi-class classification technique to classify a certain music into a multinomial distribution, which means we find the probability of a certain music uh, associated with a certain tag. So that's clear. So if you have a music, they will tell you, OK, there is a 90% of probability the music is associated with the tag rock. So there is a very low probability the music is associated with the instrument violin, something like this. So they will form this probability uh, as a multinomial distribution. So later they use some me uh, measures like uh, KL divergence or other measures to compare the two pro probability distribution to measure the similarity. That's one way to go. So the obvious disadvantage is that if you want to describe music uh, in a more meaningful sense, you have to come up with a very large vocabulary. Very easily, you, can, you have to include uh, hundreds of words, or even a thousand of words. So in that case, the dimension of this distribution will be nearly a thousand. So you use that to compare uh, two music items in a large database. That's very